Page 36, Prelude in D Minor. On the previous pages, they cover some more information about diminished seventh chords. You can go read all about them. I think I'm done talking about diminished seventh chords. If you're interested in improvising or composing or arranging or something, you're going to need a lot more than what this book has to offer. So there are other YouTube videos that teach that kind of stuff, and I encourage you to go watch them to learn it. However, you can guess that we've got a few of those diminished seventh chords in this piece. D minor has one flat. It's the relative minor to F major. And this thing is just basically a bunch of broken chords. So, I'm going to talk about a few things. The left hand. I normally start with the right hand, but I'm going to start with the left hand here. Because it's... Look at the first measure. You have a whole note. You can hold that down for the whole measure. And then another voice you see another D there at the eighth note that's another voice it doesn't mean you play it twice it means two voices are, are covering that note and then the other voice plays an F and that F is tied so it's going to be held down the rest of the measure so those two notes once played are down for the whole measure it's like that throughout this whole thing if you look at the left hand Everywhere in here, except the very last measure on page 37, you have this pattern of a whole note staying down and then the other voice is an eighth note and whatever. Just follow their fingering, it's fine. Now for the right hand, take the first four notes here. It's just an extended position. It's a D minor chord, but it's in second version. And that's a good fingering. Use fourth finger. Most of these you're going to use fourth finger, not third. Like in the next measure on this one, use fourth finger, not third. Because the chord is this. It's a seventh. And that's the fingering I recommend. Most of them they have you using fourth finger, and that's good. I like that. The exception would be like the D minor chord. Uh, where do we get it? The second measure, top of page 37. This one, that's third finger on that one. The idea is when fifth finger is involved, if the interval is a third or less, use fourth finger if possible. And that's why at the beginning when we did this, is a, a major third. It's a third. It doesn't matter if it's major or minor. It it's a third or less. So that's why I say use fourth finger. And the second measure, same thing. That's a third, so I'd use fourth finger. But at the top page 37 second measure here, that's a fourth. So we use third finger. Got a lot of numbers going on, don't we? Yeah. Third line down, first measure, fourth finger on the F sharp. Again, it's a, it's a distance of a third. Fourth line down. Here you can use third finger. Because we're not here. We, this is the thing. Technically, I would finger that this way. I'll use the thumb. But because we're using the thumb, you can go ahead and get away with third finger and use the fifth on like that. Last line on page 37, the first measure is the fourth finger, not third. Second measure is third finger. Yeah. Now, go back up on page 37, second line, the last two measures on the right hand. You're down here in the bass clef on here and watch the fingering. It's one, four. It's a good fingering. I'm just pointing it out, but it's a, play a legato. Just have to work it out. Similar thing in the last measure on page 37. You're here. That's fine. Just play it legato. Be aware at the bottom of page 36, second measure, watch those notes. In the right hand, it's here, it's starting with an F. And then crossover for the last note, that's an E. So that'll get you if you're not looking out for it. Now one little gotcha you need to be aware of is when you go from the last measure of page 37 and you take the DS and you go back and you start at the last measure on page 36, Watch the left hand, because the right hand seems to be all right. It's got a quarter rest, but the left hand doesn't. So the left hand's here, and the next note there, when you DS, is here. You 
can get away with playing that with third finger if you want. Just know that third finger is needed again on the next major. Or if you can reach it, go ahead and use fourth finger. Just so you're aware of it. As far as the pedaling goes, you can go ahead and pedal it the way they're telling you to. I don't know that I agree with it, but we'll go with it. Uh, you don't need to pedal the first beat because you're going to finger pedal those, which means you're going to hold the notes down. So you pedal after you play the first note in the right hand. So I'm going to push the pedal down right after I play the first note in the right hand. Here, at the beginning. I'm going to lift the pedal up right after I play the first note in the next measure. So it'll, it's like legato. It sounds legato all the way through. If you're a little early with the pedal, it's really okay, because you're holding these notes down in the left hand anyway, so as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you're early. You could push the pedal down with the left hand second note. To me, that's easier than waiting on the right hand to play, so it's up to you. Just don't be late with the pedal. Now, you're not pedaling everything. Those measures are showing without pedal. Don't pedal those, obviously, or it'll, it'll get really messy. As far as phrasing, there isn't really any phrasing. The only break might be at the end of the second line on page 37. When you hear, you can lift up before you go on to the next line because there's a break. That's pretty much it for the pedal. It's not too bad. The dynamics, they don't give you a lot in dynamics, so you're going to have to experiment. It does get a little louder and softer. It never gets really soft. It never gets really loud. It's always sort of in the middle, but you can experiment, and you can do that with each of these things. If you want to have a little swell with each one, then try that. But if you don't like that effect, then don't do it. Keep it all down. Maybe you want uh, the left hand, because it's the beginning of the measure, to be a little louder than the other to reinforce the beginning of each of these groups. Try that. So, so put a little extra on the left hand. In other words, bring out the left hand. It's up to you and your imagination, so experiment with these dynamics and play around with them, because you can really accidentally discover some wonderful effects doing that. Now it's in cut time and we're going to feel it in two. One, two. Andante moderato is kind of a, a leisurely moderato. Well, one, two, one e and a, the eighth notes, one e and a, two e and a, one e and a, two e and a, one. And that's really about it. You have over on page 37, second line, the poco dim means diminuendo or gets softer just a little bit. And there's a note there in the last two measures of the second line, second time retardando, which means second time slow down, you're coming to an end. That comes in handy because at the bottom of the page on 37 you have the ds alfine. The ds is going to send you back to the sign. Then you got to go find where the sign is. Well, the sign is at the bottom of page 36 at the beginning of the last measure. So you're going to go back and play that measure and then go back to 37 and play those two lines again. Now, I'm not going to do a play with me again. I don't know that you really need my help in checking the notes, but I will sort of play it slowly to give you an idea what it sounds like. If you'd like to play along, you're welcome to do so. I'm not going to perform it or take it up to performance speed, but I'll at least give you an idea what the notes sound like in the pedaling. So I'm going to give myself four counts. That's four half notes. So hands here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, tw